ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله قال بعد السلف قال بعد السلف لا يفلح قوم لا يعرفون الله الا في رمضان some of the salaf they used to say that they are not successful they will never be successful a people who only remember allah in ramadan ya ibad it is incumbent it is a must as ramadan is tadrib ramadan is a training in ramadan an individual he strives hard in ramadan an individual he exerts himself to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a tadrib it is a training it is not meant to be that which is a goal within within itself to only worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ramadan and then once ramadan has left to cease and desist from the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun and i did not create the jinn nor the mankind except for them to worship me this ibadah ya ibad it is that which takes place all year long this ibadah ya ibad it is that which takes place until there comes to an individual certainty and that certainty it is death until there comes to an individual death he has to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fadilah to sheikh al allama al imam imam bin baz rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions he says هذه العباده التي خلق الله ثقلين من اجلها هي التوحيد بانواع العباده he said that this ibadah which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created the thaqulain the thaqulain this is the jinn and the human beings the reason in which he created the jinn and the human beings for this ibadah to worship him and to him alone in order that they may establish the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they established the anwa of ibadah they established all of the categories of ibadah min salah wa sawm wa zakah wa hajj wa ruku' wa sujood wa tawaf wa dhabh wa nadhar wa khawf wa raja wa istighatha wa isti'ana wa isti'adha wa sari anwa al dua the imam rahimahullah ta'ala he says those categories of worship from the prayer from the fasting from the zakah from the hajj from the ruku' from the bowing from the sujood from the prostration from the tawaf from the dhabh from the slaughtering and from the taking of oaths and the like and all of the different categories of dua and likewise ar raja and khawf and the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having hope in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of peril and asking the help and aid and assistance from allah ta'ala and asking allah for protection in all of the anwa of dua all of the anwa all of the types all of the different categories of dua of ibadah of supplication yadkhulu fi dhalika ta'atu 
And also what enters into that is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also what is that is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also tark and nawahi and staying away from his prohibitions. All of this enters into what it means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things are things that are not restricted to Ramadan. So the Salaf they will say, Bits al qawm La ya'rifun Allah illa fi Ramadan. So the Salaf they used to say, What an evil people. What a most horrible people are those who only know Allah inside of Ramadan. What a horrible people, those who only want to obey Allah in Ramadan. What a horrible people, those who want to only stay away from His prohibitions in the month of Ramadan. As if the Lord of Ramadan is not the Lord of the other months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter the month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with His obedience in Ramadan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands with His obedience in the rest of the months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us from the prohibitions in Ramadan. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us in the rest of the months. Also what enters into that is that we have to stick to and cling to the book of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan when we are in a state of fasting and when we are not fasting because this is the road to success. وَقَالَ الْعَلَامَ تَعْلِيقًا عَلَى قَوْلِ السَّلَفِ And the Imam he said in commenting on the statement of the Salaf بِئْسِ الْقَوْمِ لا يعرفون الله إلا في رمضان. That what an evil people they are, the ones who only know Allah inside of Ramadan. قال إمام بن باز رحمه الله تعالى وهذا صحيح. He said in this, this is correct. إذا كانوا يضيعون الفرائض. If these are individuals who leave off the obligations, if they are individuals who leave off the obligations, this is what is being spoken about. Those individuals who only want to pray in Ramadan. Those individuals who only want to establish that which is fard, that which is obligatory only in Ramadan. And then after Ramadan, they throw it behind their backs as if they don't know. The Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says, Ya'ani, meaning, Yusalli fi Ramadan. Wa yatriku salah fi ma siwa Ramadan. He said, meaning that they pray in Ramadan. But then they leave off the prayer in other than Ramadan. So in Ramadan you find that they're diligent in praying Fajr. They're diligent in praying Dhuhr. They're diligent in praying Asr. They're diligent in praying Maghrib. Diligent in praying Isha. But once Ramadan is over, they have no concern to pray Fajr. They have no concern for Dhuhr. No concern for Asr. No Maghrib. No Isha. They have no concern for the Salawat. No concern for that which Allah Ta'ala has made wajib upon them. So the Shaykh, he says, So therefore, بِئْسَ الْقَوْمِ so therefore, they are the most evil, they are most despicable, or most heinous of people. He says, the أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِهَذَا He said, because by way of this, they would have committed disbelief. Because by way of this, they would have fallen into kufr. لِمَاذَا لِأَنَّ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ kufr. Because the leaving of the prayer is disbelief. To leave the prayer is disbelief. Kufr. The Imam, he says, نَسَى اللَّهُ عَافِيَ We ask Allah Ta'ala, for protection. We ask Allah Ta'ala to safeguard us from this. The Prophet Sallallahu he said in a hadith that has been collected in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, also has been collected in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi wa Nisa'i. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Istami'u ya ibad. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قال, Al-Ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salaa faman tarakaha faqad kafar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Nabiullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the one who has said that the covenant, the difference, yani, that is between us and them, the covenant between us and them is the salah. The difference between us and them. Men ha'ula, who is the them? They are the kuffar. The difference between us, who is the us? The Muslims. The difference between the Muslims and the kuffar, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as-salah, the prayer, the prayer. And then he, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one who said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ And whoever has left it off, whoever has abandoned the prayer, whoever does not pray, the Prophet Wasallam he said, then verily, فَقَدْ For verily, he has disbelieved. Then verily he has disbelieved. 
So this is why the Imam, he says, Naam, this is Sahih. For those individuals who leave off the obligations, for those individuals who leave off what is wajib, those individuals who leave off that which Allah Ta'ala has mandated upon them, from the salah, and so on and so forth, then yes, because by the abandonment of the salah, then they would have fallen into disbelief. So yes, what an evil of people are the ones who only know, only know Allah in Ramadan. If you want to be successful, ya ibad, we have to be of those who are striving in every month. We have to be of those who are steadfast upon that which is wajib every month. We have to be of those who are striving to stay away from that which is haram every month. We have to be of those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah ta'ala, He says, وَأَفِيرُ Allah And obey Allah. We have to be of those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be of those who obey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah ta'ala, He says, وَأَفِيرُ Rasul," And obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the Messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prevents you from, stay away from it. Whatever he prohibits you from, stay away from it. We have to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ if we want success. If we want to be of those who are successful, if we want to be of those who benefit from their lives, then we have to be upon the kitab and have to be upon the sunnah. Because what good is a life that a person does not worship Allah therein? What good is a lifespan for a man who spends it Upon shirk and bid'ah. What good is a lifespan for a man who spends it upon kufr? What good is that lifespan? That lifespan has no benefit for that individual. That lifespan will end up in that individual's abode being the hellfire. So we have to be of those who fill our lives, who base our lives upon a tawheed wa sunnah, upon the book, upon the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we want success. And it's important that we know and we understand that when we cling to the book and we cling to the sunnah, it's not upon the fahm of what we just thought about, or the fahm of what our forefathers told us about, or the fahm of what the shaykh, maulana, whoever he says, but rather it's upon the fahm of the salaf of this ummah, the fahm of the sahaba. So we take to the kitab and the sunnah ala fahm al salaf ummah, Upon the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, those Salaf whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِتْ تَدَوْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in addressing the Jews and the Christians, those who said that you have to be a Jew or Christian to be guided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He refuted them in their claim. He refuted them in their claim. And at the end of this refutation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, So if they, the Jews and the Christians, believe like you, the Sahaba believe, then, then, then they will be guided. Istamiru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And if they, the Jews and the Christians, believe like you, the Sahaba believe, then they will be guided. So is there any wonder? Is there any ambiguity in this? We have to be upon the way of the Salaf. We have to stick to the way of the Sahaba and those who follow them in good. For those who need more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبِعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and for those who came first and foremost, from those who made the hijrah, the muhajirun, and from the ansar, those who helped them, who aided them from the occupants of Medina, and those who follow them in good, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us and also informing us that we have to follow the sahaba in good and that He is pleased with the sahaba and pleased with those who follow them in good. But I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to Allah Ta'ala's statement. Be ihsan and good. Al Alama Shaykh Salah al Fawzan. Ta'ala, he mentions. 
Following them in good means we have to be upon what they are upon in truth and sincerity. Not those who launch a claim, but then we are not truly upon what they are upon. Because anyone can launch a claim. Anyone could claim something, but it doesn't equate to reality. So not just those who say we're upon Sunnah, not just those who say Nam, Nahnu min ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, not just those who say Nam, Nahnu min Salafiyin, but those who are truly Salafi, those who are truly from ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, those who follow them in good, not from the Hizbiyin, not from the Hizbis, those who claim that they are Salafi, but they are not. What is the difference between the Hizbi and between the one who's truly Salafi? Is you find the one who is Salafi follows them in good. The one who is upon Hizbi, he don't follow them in good. He take what he want, leave what he want. He make his love, his loyalty. He make his hatred, he make his disloyalty based upon his desires. Not based upon Kitab, not based upon Sunnah, not based upon the way of the Salaf, based upon a Jama'ah, based upon a Jama'iyah, based upon this, based upon that, based upon his Hizb. Whereas the one who is truly upon the Kitab and the Sunnah, his love, his hate, his loyalty, his disloyalty is based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The way the Sahaba understood it. This is what it means to follow them in good. They love for Allah, they hate for Allah. They are loyal to individuals for Allah. They separate from individuals for Allah. The ulama, they explain from them, Shaykh Abdullah Bukhari and Shaykh Muhammad bin Hadi. The ulama, they explain what it means to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to hate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said that we love the person and we treat the person well and we hold them in high esteem and we hold the person and have a good opinion of the person, the one who was close and near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if that person never did nothing for us. Even if that person never did anything for us. We love him. Why? Because he's one he's striving. He's striving to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's striving to be upon that which is correct. He's one who's upon that which is correct. So we love him, even though he has never done anything for us. And they said in that we hate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who's far away, the one who's upon bid'ah, the one who's upon kufr, the one who's upon, 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 from the, from the ways of misguidance. Even if that person is one who's close to us. Even if that person is one who has done much for us. Even if that's a person who has helped us out in the dunya. Even if that's a person who helped us get a job. Even if that's a person who helped us into acquiring a vehicle or whatever. If that individual is upon bid'ah, the individual is upon kufr, then we have for that individual bugd. Fillah. We have for him hatred for Allah. For Allah. Why? Because he's an individual who's most transgressant with his Lord. He's an individual who's most disobedient to his Lord. So for that fact, we hate him. Why? For Allah. So we have to follow them, be upon their way, be ihsan. Those who are upon their way and follow them, then for them is the Jannah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he explains. And for those who think that there is an, an alternative and they can take another way, let us listen to Allah ta'ala's statement. وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنْ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah Ta'ala He says And whoever contradicts the messenger whoever, whoever opposes the messenger Whoever wants to put himself in one direction While the messenger وسلم, is in another direction And he goes against the way of the believers He goes against the way of the believers Who are the believers that are mentioned in the ayah? Then they are the believers who were the believers when the eye was revealed? That group of believers who were there when the eye was revealed, who are they? The Sahaba. Allah Ta'ala says, and they take away other than the way of the believers, meaning other than the way of the Sahaba. What's for the one who goes against the messenger and he adopts a way other than the way of the Sahaba? What's for him? Allah Ta'ala, he says, we will leave him to that which he has turned himself to and enter him into Jahannam. What a evil, what a worse, a final abode. What a worse. Final destination. But this is befitting. This is befitting for a most despicable people. So if we want to be successful, Ya Ibad, we have to adorn ourselves with the characteristics that will bring about success, the characteristics of those who are successful. We have to strive to be upon that which the Sahaba were upon. 
as the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdi min ba'di." Wa qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Ma ana alayhi al-yawm wa ashabi." Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, "It is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me." The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, "That which I and my companions are upon." That was in response to asking, and who would be that safe sect? The Prophet said, Salami said, that which I and my companions are upon. So if we want safety, then we have to be upon that which the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions were upon. And we contemplate and look at what they were upon. They were not a people who only knew Allah in Ramadan. فَبِئْسَ الْقَوْمِ لَا يَعْرِفُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا فِي رَمَضَانِ So what an evil of people are they indeed, those who only know Allah in Ramadan. هذا يا عباد قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم ورزاكم الله خيرا